And the Bootcast synth of the month is the sequential Trigon 6. going to be a bit of a strange synth of the month this month because uh, I've only got this for a very short time and I've actually just done a review for Nick at Sonic State and I don't want to tread over everything I've done with them so um, what, I've, what I'm have what i going to do is just basically uh, do a few presets that's brass as the pan spread I mean it's pretty f huge sounding. Hasn't even got any effects on. Let's do those. I'm sure you'll agree, that sounds in enormous, does it not? Um, and yeah, it's because it's got three oscillators. Yeah, none of the other six voice sequential, formerly Dave Smith instruments synths, have three oscillators. Um, the OB6, which I've already showed you, is uh, has only got two oscillators and one of them uh, with a sub. But this is three true oscillators, and it really does. <laughs> It's it's bloody huge. I mean, it's enormous. Um, and I, I can't help but I'm sure you can see it as well. I mean, this feels very uh, like Mini Moogie, doesn't it? So we've got the switches and the octave switch and down to low and backwards saw and all this stuff. I mentioned this in the Sonic State review, which you must go and check out because it's much more in-depth than this is going to be. So what I'm going to do is go through a few sounds and hopefully then show you a sound that I've made, which utilises the fact that we've got three oscillators on a polysynth, which is pretty rare. So yeah, that's the brass sound. Wait, no, it's not. So as you can hear, that's the first sound they want you to hear. Preset 000. zero, zero. Let's have a look. So talking to Nick about this, and um, and quite a few people online have been saying this is like a memory moog. Now I've never played a memory moog. I have no idea. But it does have that kind of. It's a sort of ballsy in your face kind of. Even I mean it's fat as hell, but it's it's sort of. There's something kind of very um. Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say basic. So yeah, it's got L one LFO. Once again, same problem as the uh, OB6 has only one amount knob with all of these destinations. The polymod section, which is pretty cool. After touch, which is a bit harsh. It's quite, quite quick to go up there. But let's um, just initialize this. I think it's best to steer clear of the presets. So I'll just try and do something on my own. So. So we've got this uh, ladder filter. Bring up the resonance. Behaves like a Moog ladder filter, sort of. Except it does have... It goes down a bit lower. And we've also got a two-pole version, which is even more powerful. So yeah, let's go for... Um, yeah, first sound I'm going to do. So it's pretty huge. We've got this knob here which goes between drive and feedback. And drive is a, adding a little bit of extra power into the... 
But if we go the other way to feedback, which is the old put the output into the input and make it eat itself. Did you hear that feedback? It's a bit like Roland SH1. Um, when I put the feedback into there, you get a low note and as it dies away, it goes up. So, you hear that drifting up? So that's really behaving the way I would want it to. And it gets a bit crackly and a bit more aggressive than you'd expect from polysynth. Sounds a lot brighter and harsher and more aggressive and violent than the OB does. I'm sure it's possible to coax gentle stuff out of it. Let's have a go. Well, not, no, not yet. I'll take the feedback off first. So that's quite lovely. Okay. So what we found here is that these are, I'll take the resonance off. I'm guessing these are slightly out of tune with each other. Yes, they are. To bring the resonance up. It's reacting rather beautifully, that interference between itself in the oscillators being slightly out of tune is hitting the filter and causing that little bit of... Bring up the pan spread again. Oh, that's quite lovely, isn't it? slightly surprised myself there. Something I noticed myself doing a lot as I've been playing with this for the last couple of days is I very rarely go to the effects and turn them on because it's already sounding enough without the effects. I really like that. I can't save it though because it's not mine. I don't want to overwrite someone else's <laughs> someone else's baby. So yeah, so that's I guess that's gentle and a little bit quirky and odd. So it's capable of being, you know, balls out in your face, insane, loud, brassy, bam, ouch, my ears. But also it's capable of doing this kind of thing. Jolly good. So as I said, it's going to be a strange one. I'm not going to go through all of the front panel. I'm not going to give you stories about it because I don't have any. I've only had it for a day. Um, so um, I'm going to try and uh, make a sound that I made on the Sonic Talk demo. So let's try and do that. Okay, each of these oscillators has a pulse waveform with and it goes through zero. They all do. So that's pretty cool. So I figured as we've got three oscillators, let's try and make something that uh, well, I'll show you. So um, I'm going to make a bass sound down here, just with this one oscillator. Bring up a bit of resonance, just a bit. Maybe a bit of drive. Right. I'm going to put a bit of LFO into the pulse width of three. Here we go.
Next, I'm going to take these other two, I'll just disconnect that for the moment, and I'm going to use the polymod section and connect the filter envelope to pulse width of one and two. So, so we can uh, basically now the filter envelope is controlling the pulse width of those two oscillators. So. I can delay the onset of them, use this envelope as a sort of a slow attack for these two. Tune that. I'm going to turn the vintage knob down. Just a little side note, the vintage knob doesn't seem to affect the tuning of the oscillators in this particular model I've got here. It may change in the future. It has more of an effect on the filters and the, the envelopes, it sort of um, slightly randomizes the envelopes and the filters of the six cards inside. Not the tuning, so I don't, I'm not going to use that. So there we go. Okay, and together, let's bring that back. I'm just going to put some bucket brigade delay. result is this. So we've got a root note coming in and then a little chord coming in as well. This is definitely something you couldn't do with the OB6. So this was Dave Smith's last work, and such it should be revered, just for that alone. Um, it is rather pricey. Um, I'm tempted, but there's no way I can afford it. It has a pretty unique quality. It's nothing like the OB6. It might be a, possibly a bit closer to the Prophet 6, but... A bit more violent and unruly. And let that be a lesson to you. Thanks for watching.